Hello, everybody, and welcome back to JapanSauce.net. Today, I'm going to be talking about another legendary sword. If you remember in my previous video, the Tenka Goken, the Five Swords Under Heaven, there was another legendary sword created by the swordsmith Munechika, and that sword is the Kogitsune Maru. So, the following story tells a tale about how this sword was supposedly created. We hope you enjoy. The story begins back in the reign of Emperor Ichijo. He is the 66th Emperor of Japan. One night he had a strange dream that said to him that he needed to have a sword forged for him. So the next day he woke up and sent his envoy, Tachibana no Michinari, to the forge of Sanjo Munichika. Munichika, by that time, had been known as one of the best swordsmiths in all of Japan. Michinari traveled to Sanjo Munichika and gave him this emperor decree, which basically said, The emperor really wants you to make him a sword immediately. Munichika saw this as a great honor to be asked by the emperor to have a sword forged just for him. But the problem was that Munichika at that time. Didn't have anybody to assist him in the forging. But he couldn't just tell the emperor no. After all, he is the emperor. So he agreed to make the sword. Well, Munichika was very, very distraught about this task. So he did what anybody else would do he went to go pray. He traveled straight to the Fushimi Inari shrine so that he could pray for some type of divine assistance. After he prayed, he was walking back away from the shrine through those red tori when suddenly this boy appeared in front of Munechika and said, Aren't you Kokaji Munechika from Sanjo? Munechika was surprised. How did this boy know who he was? And so Munechika asked him. But the boy didn't answer him. But instead he continued, You've been tasked by the emperor to forge a sword, right? Munechika was even more confused. How did this boy know what the emperor had requested of him? Munichika said, Yes, the only problem is that I don't have any assistant to help me forge the sword. The boy then said, Don't worry about it. Head back to your forge and pray, and I'm sure divine assistance will be sent for you. At that point, Munichika thought, This is not a normal boy. And then suddenly the boy was gone. Munichika didn't know what to make of that. The next morning, Munichika did as the boy had said. He prepared his forge and completed the traditional prayers and rituals before preparing a sword. And in his prayer, he asked for divine assistance. Out of nowhere, the boy reappeared and said, I'm here to help you. That's when Munichika realized that this boy was the embodiment of the god Inari. You see, Inari is the god of fertility, rice, agriculture, as well as swordsmiths. So without even having to say anything, the boy knew exactly what to do. He knew when to stop, when to go, how much force was required from the hammer blows, how to perfectly assist Munichika in the forge. And so, with the help of the god Inari, Munichika had created one of his greatest masterworks. Munichika proceeded to sign the front of the sword with the name Kogaji Munichika and the backside with Kogitsune, which means little fox. But as soon as he had finished with that very last stroke, the boy vanished. The next day, Munichika handed the sword to the emperor and the emperor had never seen a sword that beautiful. And so, that's how the Kogitsune Maru was born. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story of the legendary sword, Kogitsune Maru. And if you want to learn more about Japan, the culture, the people, and all of the great things that you can find there, make sure to stop by our website, www.japansauce.net. You can also find us on Facebook, on Twitter, and of course, Instagram. Until next time, Jamata!